welcome back to Stars Insider. I'm your host, Julie Dobbs. Well, every year, Hockey Fights Cancer Night is a very emotional night at the American Airlines Center, and this year was none different. The wife of General Manager Jim Nill, Becky Nill, was the guest of honor for the night, and she dropped the puck to kick things off before the game. I had the chance to sit down with Becky and talk to her about her very inspiring battle with cancer. Behind every great man is a great woman. Behind our general manager is Rebecca Nill. Jim and Rebecca met in St. Louis in 1982. Two years after meeting, they were married. Three kids and several teams later, they now call Dallas their home. In 1999, their commitment and love for each other and their family would forever change when Rebecca was diagnosed with breast cancer. Starting back at the very beginning of when this whole journey for you began, it was 1999. Can you kind of tell me what that initial diagnosis was and in your immediate reaction when you did hear? Jim and I had just been in Michigan a year, and I was active with three kids, a runner, uh, worked out, but I was starting to struggle in my runs, and one day I could run three miles, the next day I was absolutely exhausted. Um, found a lump um, actually up high in my, kind of my collarbone area. Uh, no, not really concerned that it would be any kind of cancer because it didn't make any sense. I have no family history, it's 37, and fit and active went and saw a doctor uh, I think with the very next day I think it was a Saturday and she just said come and see me office is closed but just come and see me and she looked at my slides the mammogram slides and was suspicious so we we did a biopsy um, that day and um, wound up having a lumpectomy I chose to stay awake for it because I was sure that there would be nothing and it would be not a big deal. But within 15 minutes, I walked out of there and knew that I had cancer. When you first heard for the first time that you did in fact have breast cancer, what what goes through your, your mind? I remember driving home in the car with Jim and calling my family. And they, that was very hard to say the word that I have cancer. And so fear turned to um, acknowledging. I was like, okay, let's. It, this is just what you gotta do. And so I took that approach. It's just like, it's just after this, I'm gonna go through this and then I'm gonna be done with it. So at what point did you hear from, or did you hear from the doctors, this is gone, the chemo has, done what we wanted it to do. I heard that for 10 years after. Mm -hmm. So there was no um, no reoccurrence in any way of the cancer um, in, in all of that time. Mm -hmm. So once you did the steps, you did the treatment, everything was good? Gone, done. So at that point, I imagine it, it, for me even right now, it's like you kind of just want to put that Put it away, put that memory away, move on with your life. Yes, done, over. January 2011, now I have, I have a frozen shoulder. And I just said, I'm either having a heart attack or I have cancer. And you know, I, I don't know what else to, to say. Something is wrong. That's, you know, just putting it all together. Really what the frozen shoulder was, was that there was cancer in my shoulder, then the cancer the same breast cancer that I had in 99 was now in my liver and my bones. So that makes it a stage four cancer and it's not curable. For a full year, I did chemotherapy every day. I, I started to change my perspective about, you know, I can't control this, but I can live every day and choose to have joy I just took that and started to turn it around to just being in the moment with whoever I was with. Um, really, Jim pretty much shut everything down that he could, and he started taking care of me. When did Jim get the call from Dallas? He calls me March or April, I'm not sure of the timing, but he calls me and he just said, I, I got a call from the Dallas Stars. 
And um, I said, for a, a job or what? And he said, yeah. He said, they, they're interested in interviewing me uh, for a job. And I just said, you need to go. Whether I was going to live two months or another 20 years or whatever, it, it seemed selfish of me to even think that he shouldn't even accept or look at that kind of a job. Um, when I know that that's been a goal of his for all of his life. It's been a couple years now. How has that transition been for you? Moving is hard whether you're sick or not. So the physical move of it was hard. But when I see Jim in his element and when I see our team and the success, um, even making the playoffs, you know, his first year and the potential that is there with this team, it, it makes me excited and I know that um, it's it's good. It's a it's a great thing. I've been on this chemotherapy for two years solid, and um, just at the last MRI, that the cancer is is stable. It is still there in my liver, um, but it is not active. I'm going to choose to be better, not bitter, and having the joy in everything that I get to do and see every day. And and I know personally that you've made it a point to really reach out to people that are in your shoes. And you may not know how much you, just seeing you, inspired me through my journey. Why is that something that you feel is important? Each day is a gift. There is hope. And I hope one day that we can sit here and talk about a cure, not just for this disease, I think of this for the other diseases too, diabetes, Crohn's, all of those other stuff. It's, it's that same thing. It's a chronic illness, it's lifelong, and I hope that we'll get to see that one day. More from Hockey Fights Cancer Night when we come back. If you love family.